Let's explain where we are in the build. This 3D model shows the concrete shell of the home. Let's turn off the garage, my office, the storm room, bedrooms, etc. and zoom in on the center of the house. In this region we see the radial vaults which are made out of shot crete sprayed over steel arches sitting on these precast concrete ribs. The ribs are actually set into a central tower made of shot crete over a steel skeleton. And if we remove the shot crete, you can see how the steel supported the concrete ribs before the shot crete was applied. This compression ring beam takes loads from all the ribs through this plate and into these structural steel pipe columns. And eventually these are held in place by the concrete floor. But before that's poured, they need to be attached to plates that are resting on the edge of the shot crete wall below. The computer model has a nice flat surface here, but the reality is that the shot crete guys did not do a great job of squaring off the edge of this wall. I needed to fix that. After measuring the base locations carefully, I set up and leveled these cardboard dams in all the right places. We mixed up some mortar and fixed all the problem spots all the way around. The mortar was pretty much self-leveling. The next step was to prepare the steel bases. I bought a bunch of scaffold bases for about $4 each, but the holes were too small to fit the anchors through so I would need to drill those out. Drilling steel requires low speed and lubrication. To prevent the oil from just falling through, I tape the bottom of each hole. I lubricated with thread cutting oil. This container cost me about $4. The drill bit was 7 so I used the lubricant generously to preserve the life of the bit. I found applying the oil directly to the bit was the best way. I set my drill press on the lowest speed that it had and gently pressed down. If your speed, pressure, and lubrication are correct, you should get long spirals of metal coming off. This shows that you're cutting into the steel and not just wearing away your bit. Now, as you can see, the anchor fits through the hole. In order to avoid drilling into steel that was already in the wall, I had to shift the third hole inward. It was too near the post to drill from the top, so I had to flip the plate to drill from the bottom. Because this is a fresh hole, the process is slightly different. I would start with a little oil and drill a little bit so that I had a little divot to fill, and then I could fill that up with oil and finish the job. I just have to repeat for the 29 other holes. After all the bases were ready, it was time to head back out and mount them to the wall. I messed up one of the anchors on this first one. It wouldn't go all the way into the hole. Maybe there was some dust in there or something. So it wouldn't tighten properly. And I couldn't take it out either. Lesson learned and I put the rest in more carefully. I was also careful to make sure that each was level. My steel posts were ready a couple days early, so I went and picked them up in my trusty trailer. They weighed about 100 pounds each. With my parents and sister on site, we got to work. The first hour was spent mostly setting up the scaffolding and stuff. And then I used my skid steer to move the steel posts to where we needed them. This saved time and energy. We needed that energy to get the posts into position. We held each post steady and plumb, and then tacked it into place with the welder. Actually, as soon as we got to the second post, the welder jammed. Maybe it got tangled while it was being moved. Anyway, we sorted this out and got back to work. This third post was the one on that less stable base, so we added extra bracing to keep it plumb. a lot of adjusting the scaffolding, etc. to make it all work. It took us about an hour to get the first five posts in. They were on the side of the circle that was easy to reach because of the ground level.
We were expecting the back side where we'd have to balance on the wall to be more difficult, but it was pretty easy too. My sister and I both enjoyed the welding, so we took turns. Let's go back to the other angle. Even welded to that plate which was bolted to the concrete with three and a half inch anchors, I was worried that someone may give these a good push and cause them to shift. There's a lot of leverage there with these eight foot posts. So I wanted to weld that big ring beam on right away. But each half was about 320 pounds. We'll have to get a proper crane with rigging to do it properly eventually. In the meantime, we decided to weld some rebar between the posts as a temporary solution. This was nice and easy, and actually kind of like the look of it. So it'll be sad to have to cut most of it off again when we need to put the door box in. That's it for this portion of the build. Now the quad deck can be added and the concrete floor poured over that basement. That'll lock these posts in place nicely. The rest of the steel arches are still being rolled. I'll soon start on the forms for those big precast concrete ribs.